It's in those quiet moments that we simply say to him, Lord, I love you. I love you, Lord. I am so glad, Lord, that you remembered me in my afflictions. And you were there to intervene in my life. Lord, I love you. And I'm grateful for your enduring mercy. We're here today. Though we are dying, yet living for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, somebody. Some of you don't get my drift. <laughs> but Paul said, I die daily. And though we are living on this earth, we are living in the land of the dying. We must die to our self. We must die to our flesh. We must die to having it the way we want in life and ask the Lord to continually have your way with me and through me that you may be glorified. That is my prayer this morning, that the Lord may be glorified in my life and yours. We continue our series in Sold Out. I am so glad for those two words, sold out. And as we go on this journey, continue to go on this journey, I pray that at the end of this journey, there will be a sign posted up in your heart and soul that says, I am sold out for Jesus. You have the scripture text, Philippians chapter 3, verses, 11, verses 7 through 11. I'll not read that, those scriptures. Uh, in view of time, I will go verse by verse, and we will end where we end. Praise the Lord. Hopefully, you will end on a good note and get your milk and cookies, I mean, in your coffee and <laughs> cookies. <laughs> verse 7, but for whatever gain I had, I count as loss for the sake of Christ. Whatever gain. And... Saul of Tarsus had gained a lot in regards to how he prepared himself for his future and his reputation and how he was able to go into the circles of influence and probably dined at good places and had favored uh, treatment from those who he was a part of, the elite and the establishment. And he says, whatever gain I have had, his, his influence on the lives of other people as Saul of Tarsus, his ability to put people in prison because of who he was and who he knew and his reputation of being someone that you need to fear. He had placed great emphasis on his ethnicity and lineage and training in Judaism from the great religious leaders of his day. His list of accomplishments were very impressive and had opened many doors of opportunity for him to excel above others. He was very determined to be on the right side of religion and the law of the Old Testament and with the Roman Empire. He wanted to position himself so well that without a doubt, 
he would be viewed as a person who was righteous. In light of being made righteous by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, Paul, who was transformed, Saul, who was transformed to Paul, weighed his accomplishments with eternity in view, making sure that he was led by Holy Spirit after his conversion. He wanted to do the will of God. The spirit of truth would lead him. He humbly stepped out of his circle of influence to pursue a hostile world as a witness for Jesus who he was persecuting. Just imagine this. You in your circle of influence and they're giving you pats on the back and they're telling you go for it, they're telling you we support you and all of a sudden you have a change of relationship. Your paradigm changes because you've been in contact with Jesus. You've had an experience with Jesus Christ. And all of those who rooted for you and supported you began to turn their backs against you and began to be hostile toward you. And the places that you used to uh, attend and the places where you had favor, you no longer had that. And you were as if a man on an island because nobody wanted to be around you because you have betrayed, as it were in his day, the faith of the Old Testament believers. You had turned your back on us and are supporting the very people that we've given you authorization to kill and to imprison. Think about that for a moment. Let that sink in. Without an encounter with the Lord, we will give value to things and hold on to which have no eternal value with our last breath. And had he not changed his heart and changed his direction, all that he was doing was to naught, was for naught. It had no value because of the new covenant that was established with Jesus Christ. But in his heart, he wanted to be on the right side of God. Hear me now. He wanted to be on the right side of the Lord. I'm losing a little volume here I see did I turn myself off I'm okay <laughs> all right that's better so he wanted to be on the right side of God he wanted to be righteous and God knew his heart and God was going to lead him in a path that he knew not and for us today without an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ all that we've accomplished in our lives would be of no value. Imagine that. People who are millionaires and billionaires and they've done great things without a relationship with Jesus Christ, it would be of no value to them. Hello. Other people may have gained value and experienced God through the gifts and the things that they've done, but there was no value to them. Are you holding on to your past accomplishments and relying upon them to be your rite of passage with Jesus Christ? Sometimes we can be guilty of holding on to the past. Well, I've done this, and I've done that, and, and I do this, and I do that, but how is that going to weigh in regards to eternity in view? Mark chapter 8, verse 36 says, For 
what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? So you can have all the influence in this world, all the buddy systems and all of the political persuasion in this world, but we do not live according to the dictates of those who are in the world. Hello, somebody. We live according to the word of God. I only get a few amens out of that, but if you are a believer, you live according to the word of God if you want to be with the Lord eternally. Verse 8, indeed I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. There's a shedding that Paul says that he has gone through and that he continues to go through. You and I have to shed from our past. You know, I come across a lot of people that are so familiar with their past and that they're living in their past. I have high school friends that are living in the past and always talking about what they did in high school. Oh, you remember in high school? Well, what's happening today? Oh, let me tell you about when I was in high school. What good is that? That's past. And there are people who are trapped in their past, living in their past, rehearsing their past, and are not bringing value to their present and to their future. In comparison to the knowledge that he had gained concerning righteousness based on the Old Testament law, which was unattainable, he discovered what we have discovered. You know what we've discovered? We've discovered grace. Hallelujah. He discovered the grace of God through Jesus Christ and revolutionized his life. Grace, the favor of God, undeserved, unearned, freely given without works. Hallelujah, somebody. Freely given to us without having to prove our worth of being able to earn God's favor. Jesus came. The things that he had learned to treasure was receiving revelation knowledge concerning the mystery of Christ. These are the things that he earned. These are the things that he learned to cherish more than all of his accomplishments is his relationship with Jesus Christ. Whenever you are turned around by a divine intervention of God, your whole perspective and value of life changes. And if it does not change, I am wondering if you really have had an encounter with the living God. Because when you are confronted with the presence of God, it does something to you. Hello. It does something to you. It does something to your heart. It does something to your spirit. And it causes you to change the things that he learned, he treasured. Whenever you turn around, God is there. When Saul of Tarsus discovered that Jesus loved him, he became willing to shed himself of everything that would interfere with the relationship that he had discovered in Jesus Christ. Are you willing to shed the things that derail you from your relationship with Jesus? 
Are you willing to pursue him with a passion and a drive and a hunger that people may come to know Jesus Christ because of the revolutionary change that has taken place in your life, in your heart? Now, some of us may have never gone through very much in life. We've somehow had a sheltered life. But let me let you know something. Before you get out of here, <laughs> you trouble, trouble, trouble is going to come. Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulations. Hello. And we are experiencing tribulations in our world today. But he says, your attitude and my attitude should be to be of good cheer because he overcame it. And that person who lives in us is an overcomer. Did you know that? The person that is within you is an overcomer. The Bible says, greater is he that is within these old bones. is greater than he that's in the world in a youthful body. Hello, somebody. God is with us and we aim to magnify him. We aim to praise him. We aim to bless him. When we hold on to our past, we prevent ourselves from discovering a new abundant life and freedom in the spirit of Christ. Most important in our new life with Christ is walking away of the very things that has had a stronghold in our lives. Our struggle is against those strongholds, and we all have them. Hello, somebody. I put on my uh, soft shoes this morning. so that I can tread softly as I share the Word of God. So we've got to allow God to have His way. Most importantly, we have to share people, places, things, and also our thought life. We've got to stop thinking the way we used to think before we came to know Jesus Christ. Hello. And some of us struggle with that. Some of us struggle with that. Some of us struggle with that. Some of us used to judge people before we even knew them. We would size them up and we would judge them. But see, when Christ came into our lives, we no longer have the spirit in the world to judge people without even knowing them. Jesus says, judge not that you be not judged. But God does give us spiritual discernment that we can discern the will of God over the will of error and untruth. And it seems as though that people have changed their way of looking at truth as not absolute, but the word of God is absolute and what it says, it says, and what it is, it is, and what it will do, it will do if you believe it. It is often hard and painful for us when we are challenged or, or devastated by events that occur in our lives. L the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, the loss of, of, of your home, the loss of, of your daily way to live, to earn a living. We're devastated because we are people who give themselves to the things that they enjoy for life and livelihood. And we give ourselves to each other. We devote ourselves to the Lord. And when those ties are broken, it is devastating until we begin to look at eternity in view and begin to view life with the perspective of God. Looking at 
God and how God sees things and how God evaluates things. Life happens by living in a world that's under condemnation. We're living in a world under condemnation. It's not a perfect world. We're not a perfect people. And we live to survive. Hello. We want to be at peace. Hello. Don't fall asleep now. This is not the hour of sweet by and by. But we want to live in peace. But we know that this world is not at peace. And that's why Jesus says, peace I give you, not as the world, I give you me. He says, I am your peace. A peace that surpasses human understanding. How people can go through hardships, how people can go through pain and agony and, and suffering and still be cheerful. You know why? Because their lives are shaped with eternity in view. I know that I belong to the Lord, and whatever the Lord's will is, is what I desire. And I know if the Lord wants to take me out of the equation, he can take me out of the equation. But I know if he takes me out of this equation, I'm going to another equation. I'm going to be present with him. And seeking answers for those believers who have suffered great losses, there is only one answer that we know according to the testimony of the Apostle Paul. And you know it. Romans 8, 28. And we know that for those who love God... <laughs> All things work together for the good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Surely God has called each one of us into his purpose. Now, look at where Paul comes from when he is able to make that declaration. He he labors more abundantly than those who have taken on the, the call of God to propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ. In stripes, he has received above measure. Some of us uh, haven't been beaten. Hello. We've been talked to. We've been put on um, time out. <laughs> We've been punished, but we've never been beaten. He says he was beaten above measure in prisons more frequently, faced death often, often, often faced death, often faced death. From the Jews five times, received 40 stripes minus one. Some of you have never been be beaten with a leather strap. Some of you have never been beaten with ironing cords or switches. And the strap was placed on his back five times because people who used to love him hated him for his position in propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. Three times beaten with rods. Some of you have never been beaten with a rod. Have never received a caning. Hello. Never. But he did. Stoned once left to death, to die. Three times shipwrecked. But each and every time he got up. Hello, somebody. He got up, brushed himself off, and went back to doing what he was called to do. Preach the gospel. Tell the story. Testify of who I am. And many times people get tired 
and they sit down and they recline and they fall asleep and they become unaware of the call of God that is upon their lives to propagate the gospel with the gifts that God has given each one of us through salvation in Jesus Christ. We step back. Let somebody else do it. When God puts a burden on your heart, the first thing to do is to do your part. Many of us in here are to be teachers because we've heard so much gospel in so many years. And we don't share it. We don't share it to those who are seeking to know Jesus. We share it among ourselves and we edify each other. But what about those who are lost? What about those who are just barely hanging on to their hopes and dreams and, and hope that there is a better tomorrow somewhere? And you have the answer and you will not because the fire of God is not igniting your soul. And I pray that God would rekindle the fire of the Holy Spirit within you because we are dying, people. We just don't know when we're going to die. We are here for God's purpose. Regardless of whatever you are involved in, whatever you do, do it all to what? The glory of God. And let your glory be in him. Let our celebration be in him. Let our praise be in him. Let our thanksgiving be in him. Let our praise be in him. Because he is the one that's giving us the use of the faculty of our being. And I've only covered two verses of scripture. This may be a long journey to be selling out. But I am going to end here on this second verse of Scripture. Indeed, I count everything as lost because of the surpassing knowledge, worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for his sake I suffer the loss of all things, and I count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. What are you willing to go through for him? This is a great challenge. What are you willing to go through for him? Let us stand. Father God, we know that it is the work of the Holy Spirit to convince and convict us of our need for you and our sin. And Father God, we pray, Lord, as the sunset comes upon this world, when it comes to its conclusion, Father, we pray that we would be anchored in Christ Jesus. Father, we pray for those who have not made that commitment we offer them the invitation to receive your son. And Father, I pray that they will pray, Lord, forgive me of my sin. And Lord, I receive your son, Jesus Christ, as my personal savior. In Jesus' name, may the peace of God be with each one of you until we meet again. Let us work while it is day, because night is coming when no man shall work. God bless you.